Well, good morning, Madam Chair and everybody. Um, I'm coming today, this bill should actually be entitled National Infra Infrastructure Bank Creation Support. We are not creating anything here. Um, for several years, the national representatives have been trying to initiate a national infrastructure bank. And I think the conversation we just had, uh, you just heard the trip report, you know the states of our bridges, our roads, our airports, our water system. Um, the national, oh, is my expert witness on? What is her name? Um, Alfreda Mutardi. Yes, we do have her here. Yeah. And let, let me introduce her. She is, she was an economist for 30 years with the International Monetary Fund. Now she works as a consultant with the uh, National Infrastructure Bank. And I'll have her say a few words in a moment. Um, the National Infrastructure Bank's purpose is to um, develop a mechanism to support infrastructure development both within states and among states. And since I was here two years ago, um, we have presented this idea for support to all of our federal representatives, including um, Yvette Harrell, who um, left office before signing on. Our other two reps have signed on. We presented to Senator Heinrich and Senator Ben Ray Lupon, both personally to their staffs, because as Representative Lindstrom pointed out, we have incredible stuff happening over the next decades. Plus, we have all the existing problems uh, trillions of dollars worth of stuff. So the National Infrastructure Bank is a mechanism, and it's, uh, I gave you some articles. The article by Bill Ream and uh, Roger Montoya was incorrect. This doesn't involve an appropriation. It involves a mechanism to use treasury bonds. So it doesn't come out of the federal budget. But this mechanism would allow us to do the kind of interstate water projects that are being talked about in-state projects, and all this uh, memorial request is to support it so that we can add the voice of New Mexico to the push to do this. doesn't involve any financial support. It's just to our federal delegation and to the other delegations, I think about 24 state legislators, bipartisan support, have supported this. So that's all that I'm asking. And I'd like to ask uh, Madam Chair for Alfeca to explain the funding mechanism. Good morning, Ms. Mutardi. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and I really appreciate it, Madam Chair, and to the committee members. Uh, I just wanted to perhaps, uh, there are a lot of details on how this National Infrastructure Bank works in the uh, memorial itself at, at HJM5, but I just wanted to quickly cover a few things. Uh, first of all, how is this National Infrastructure Bank structured and why do we need it? The principal reason we need it is because we're just not able to finance infrastructure, either through the federal budget, through state and local budgets, like your particular budget for your state roads and other kinds of infrastructure, through bonding, uh, even though we passed a bipartisan law last year, it's all of that is not big enough, large enough to cover everything. And we've now accumulated a big backlog of projects nationwide and in New Mexico that have not gotten funding. So the purpose of this bank is to provide funding for those projects. It does operate. Uh, um, it is a government owned, a national owned public bank. Uh, it will provide very, very low cost loans. Actually, it operates uh, even though it's a public bank, it operates just like a commercial bank does when it gives out loans. It's capitalized by uh, holders of private holders of treasuries, and then it operates just like a commercial bank. Um, I wanted to give you a comparison of the of what New Mexico might benefit from compared to, for example, the bipartisan law that passed last year, which will provide New Mexico with about $3.7 billion dollars over five years. Most of that will be in transportation. But New Mexico has much larger needs than that, especially water, uh, especially uh, new grid uh, additions to move renewable energy around and, uh, and just plain baseload energy. You would, get, you would qualify for up to $33 billion over a 10-year period to fix all of those projects. Uh, and the measure of the need is the American Society of Civil Engineers 
who covers the categories uh, of, that are needed in your state. So um, it'll be things like that were invested in, like the previous bank invested in, Elephant Butte Dam, rural electrification. In this iteration, we would be doing new grid enhancements, big water projects to bring water into New Mexico and all uh, surrounding states in the Southwest that are suffering, still suffering from drought. Uh, High-speed rail, uh, which will connect your state and other states and provide an alternative um, transportation solution. Uh, we, we, uh, we want to make, make sure that there is an aspect of this bank that will ensure that loans get into rural areas. Um, this was a concern uh, uh, among your members, uh, and the way that it ensures is that the local jurisdiction will be in charge of coming to the National Infrastructure Bank to request a loan, and uh, then it'll be, be assured that it gets a kind of a loan that will solve uh, infrastructure problems in their area according to their needs. And because New Mexico is a very low-income state, the bank is configured not only to provide low cost loans, but in very low income areas to provide grants as well. And this was passed uh, by other state legislators on a bipartisan basis. For example, your neighboring state, Nevada, passed it on a bipartisan basis. California passed it unanimously. Uh, so that meant everybody voted for it. Uh, it has strong support um, uh, and we're asking that you uh, pass and uh, uh, approve uh, HJM5 to create a national infrastructure bank. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Um, McCarty. <clears throat> Are there, we're gonna go to the audience. Is there anybody in favor of House Joint Memorial 5? Yes, sir. Mark Strand with the International Brotherhood of Electrical the electrical workers. Um, I have worked on our power grid for over 30 years. The amount of demand that we're looking at putting on it is unbelievable. We need to make sure that we have a way to upgrade our grid, to make sure that we build new lines to support the new wind, the new solar, and everything else energy that we're planning on putting out on it. We need to make sure that we can move the power around to the households, back and forth, from state to state, to be able to supply the power that we're going to be demanding from it. This infrastructure bank is one way to support and to finance that upgrade. It gives us the ability to build more lines, to make sure that we can transport and distribute the power and upgrade our system to make sure that the demand that you guys are going to require on it is there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Lipschitz. Thank you, Madam Chair, and members of the committee, John Lipschitz with the New Mexico Federation of Labor. Um, I, I, of course, we urge you to support this measure and thank the sponsor for bringing it up yet again. Uh, you know, the way we view this is this is a win-win-win for everyone. Um, you know, in our, I, I hate to get too political with things, but in our, our world of kind of political vitriol, um, especially on the federal level, it really was the issue of infrastructure that brought parties together to actually get money out into the states where it's desperately needed. I think we would all agree that our infrastructure here in the state is woefully uh, behind as far as its upkeep. And uh, as was mentioned by the expert, uh, the, the funding that we're going to get from the federal infrastructure uh, uh, funding is just the tip of the iceberg of what's needed. Um, this is clearly not a Democrat or Republican measure. This is a let's get uh, our infrastructure fixed and even, uh, I would argue, possibly even more importantly, let's get people to work. Let's produce jobs. Let's, uh, let's really build our economy with this kind of measure. This is not a handout. This is a loan, a low interest loan. Our state has a history of doing that during the pandemic. Again, I think this is, should hopefully be just a win for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Mr. Sir. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. We, we just had a very high level, senior level discussion <laughs> this right now. Um, and quite frankly, we, we like the concept, actually. We'd like to see a side-by-side, -side, certainly a bonding, finance authority, and other options. But the notion of these loans exist within the DOT right now, there's no question about it. If they can come at a more affordable long-term rate that can outlive, um, that can perhaps keep up with the life of the infrastructure project, we're really supportive of that, that idea. And I think the memorial makes some points that we've been trying to make certainly, which is 
the bipartisan infrastructure law, right, is it talks about these surges of funding that are coming by way of new programs, competitive grants, not just direct formula dollars. This could be a really good tool. Thank you, Thank you very much. Anybody else? Is there anybody in opposition to the bill? Oh, I'm sorry, you've got uh, one on. Oh, Mr. Bob, two. Mr. Let's start with Mr. Baca. Mr. Baca? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me. I appreciate it. Fred Baca, I'm from Silver City, New Mexico, the southern part of the state, as you all know. I'm the director of the New Mexico League of Latin American Citizens. Um, I am also president of LULAC Council 8003 of Silver City, New Mexico. I'm president of the Copper Country Senior Olympics uh, here in the local area. I totally endorse the memorial on the NIB. I think it's uh, uh, very well stated in the memorial of what it can do, not only for the state of New Mexico, but also of the, the rest of the United States. Uh, many about 25,000 good union paying jobs could uh, come out of this. It could also help inflation, the inflation problem we're having now, uh, high speed rails and rail systems, housing, bridges, roads, uh, highways, as we know, are in, in very bad uh, disrepair. Water problems in New Mexico are tremendous in the southern part. Smaller communities always struggling with water problems. It could do a lot for them. The high-speed internet uh, to help out the rural areas and also the urban areas. Uh, this also has something for the minorities. I think it's a strong uh, a bill, a uh, memorial that can really do something for a lot of people. Uh, it's been done before three or four times past history. The only reason it was not continued was because of sunset laws. I believe we're looking at the future of New Mexico. The wonderful infrastructure bill passed by Congress uh, only provides about one-tenth of the needs uh, in the U.S. And, of course, in New Mexico, uh, costs will only go up. They will never come down. We may not see any more money from Congress into the infrastructure. This is a bipartisan memorial that uh, it's good for Democrats, independents, Republicans. It's for the people of the state of New Mexico. Uh, there's no new taxes, minimal uh, in, uh, involvement by the government. Um, I've traveled uh, from, from Lordsburg down to the state line. The highway is horrible, it's terrible. They're terrible in New Mexico. We need a lot of work. I know there's a current bill being passed by one of our senators uh, in Grand County, tremendous uh, a bill for the infrastructure, but we need a lot more. And I, I thank you very much and I strongly endorse it. And I thank you very much for your attention and all the work that you all do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rocca. Anybody else? Yeah, we've got three more. Okay, Ray Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representatives. My name is Ray Ellen Smith, and I'm the president of Indivisible Albuquerque. Our organization is in strong support of the National Infrastructure Bank, and I need to thank publicly my federal representative, Melanie Stansbury, for being a co-sponsor of this bill in Congress. As you've already heard, the National Infrastructure Bank is an idea whose time has come. Since even the federal bipartisan $1 trillion infrastructure bill will only fund about 17% of all the identified projects around the nation, we clearly need additional solutions. This National Infrastructure Bank fits that bill. To have something that can help with inflation, build all the infrastructure needs, is a tried and true method and that does not raise taxes, sort of sounds like a panacea, but its successful history proves otherwise. Even Representative Lundstrom's earlier discussion in this committee of the infrastructure needs discussed on House Bill 430 proves that we need something like a national infrastructure bank. The banking system currently fuels our economy now and using those same banking methods to fund massive infrastructure projects through loans, we can help solve the water crisis, the broadband problems, build affordable housing, upgrade the power grid, build roads and bridges and even more. Let's have New Mexico get on board with the many other states by having our legislature pass this memorial. 
New Mexico stands to lead again at the federal level by supporting this bill. We support American manufacturing, creating 25 million family sustaining jobs and increase overall GDP, as well as improving our own national security. As mentioned, this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. We can do this as Americans, and we've done it in the past. Let's come together for the benefit of all Americans and more importantly, our dear New Mexicans to support Memorial HJM5, the creation of the National Infrastructure Bank. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Evelyn. And folks, really quickly, we are expected to be on the floor by 1030. So if we can kind of keep public commentary, all commentary to um, a nice cogent one minute. One minute. Right. One, we'll, we'll do one minute. That would be great. Okay. Hi, this is Evelyn. Thank you for allowing me this time to testify. My name is Evelyn Vinagrado. I'm the chair of the DPMNM Rural Caucus and speaking to you from the grassroots level. Um, the Rural Caucus has included a statement of support for the National Infrastructure Bank and its platform and is fully in favor of HJM5. Uh, we believe that this innovative, forward-looking, and exciting initiative could provide rural New Mexico with the infrastructure resources it's been needing for quite a long time. So thank you very much, and we are in total support of this memorial. Okay, anybody else? Sarah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I speak for the Alliance for Local Economic Prosperity. I am really pleased and support everything that um, all the other supporters have said to you today. I simply want to add that this bill's, uh, the, the NIB's uh, effect on our economy will be wonderful because it will not only make the tourist ex ex experience better with our new roads, we will be able to further develop our produce and um, our chilies and to be able to have them widely available, including in other states. This will help with local transportation. It will, what it can do is astounding. But most importantly, it allows a lot of control at the local level. So what is important to be done by one county can be done there. In another county, something different can happen. They will, of course, coordinate, but we think this is a fabulous use of existing debt. It does not require any taxes, and it will not affect our federal deficit. Thank you very much. Again, we support this Memorial Five. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to the committee. Committee members. Our representative Lundstrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a couple of quick questions, and uh, for the representative and her and her uh, expert on page three, is the language on line ten through line fourteen uh, consistent with all this other state? I mean, is this language what we would use in terms of the how the bank is operated? Um, Madam Chair, Alpeke, can you answer that page three lines 10 to 15? Yeah, it'd be 10 to 15. My point is, Madam Chair, is when we talk about uh, an infrastructure bank, and I'm for it, is that when you talk about two percentage points above the U.S. Department of Treasury yield, um, my question is, is how could we have a <coughs> fixed rate already in terms of things like inflation? So I'm just curious, is this consistent language uh, that we see nationally or how, how, do we, how do we set a fixed rate uh, and then we say in this the interest would be included in the United States budget? That tells me the feds would pay for the interest. Is that not correct, Madam Chair, expert? Am I reading that wrong? Thank you very much for that very uh, uh, enlightened question. So the there are two components to opening a bank. The first is that we have to get it capitalized. And what capital is, is an investment in the bank to sort of steady its books uh, in hard times. And normally banks are required to maintain a dollar in capital to $10 in loans. And then there's the loan side, uh, which is separate. Uh, where interest is charged on loans. So going back to the first uh, step, 
We use the same capitalization method that Alexander Hamilton used for the first bank of the United States. And that is we repurpose already existing debt that's held by the private sector and ask what a little bit of the, those holders like to invest in the National Infrastructure Bank in exchange for getting a little bit better return on their investment. So instead of getting the treasury rate for the treasuries they're holding, they'll get the treasury rate plus up to an extra 2%. Now, the question is, where does that extra 2% of money come from? It comes out of the interest earnings from the NIB's loans and with plenty of money left over to meet the bank's other operational needs. This bank is self-sustaining, doesn't require infusions from the budget to subsidize our, uh, get us started or subsidize operations over time. So that uh, is where the 2% comes from. It, it would apply to all investors in the NIB, whoever they were. They would be, those investors would be silent partners, by the way, because they get exchange for their treasuries, preferred stock, which means that they're non-voting participants. And Madam Chair, um, the other question that I had is when we when we um, talk about terms, and you talk about the life of a project, how is that how is that uh, correlated? In other words, is it based on the life of the project, or how is it how is it calculated the term? So the conditions, the lending um, uh, features of the National Infrastructure Bank will be a little bit more generous and flexible than, say, the bond market is. It'll offer an interest rate on loans about half a percent less than the bond market, and then it can stretch out the maturity of the projects over the lifetime of the of the project as defined by the engineers. So if we're putting in a new bridge that's expected to, to last for 50 years, possibly we could give out a loan stretched out payments for, for a 30-year period instead of the 10 years normally that the bond market would provide. Now, Madam Chair, we also have a New Mexico infrastructure bank in the New Mexico Finance Authority, and uh, it's it's similar as to, to what you're talking about here. It's guaranteed by governmental gross receipts tax uh, as, as opposed to treasury bonds, but I, I support it. We need all the tools we need we can get in New Mexico for infrastructure development, but I do think we need to understand how the actual uh, loan works if this if this passes and whether or not it makes sense for projects in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Representative. Anybody else? Vice Chair Garcia. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. On uh, page two, uh, line fourteen, with New Mexico uh, only be receiving three hundred and fifty million dollars out of that five trillion that's needed. Um, Madam Chair and Representative, it says. Uh, this is about the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. That's what this is talking about. What's currently happening but, on lines 12 and 14. But Madam Chair, on, on like, read line 14 <coughs> on page 2, it says uh, the act provides will only uh, give New Mexico $350 million. Is that correct? Out of the, what we're trying to do here? No. Madam Chair and Representative, this is the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that's already been done by the federal government. We got $350 million from that, but we need lots, lots more. This is current, and this is one of the arguments we're saying why a national infrastructure bank makes sense, because we have access to millions and millions more of what we need. Uh, one more question, Madam Chair. Uh, how about the New Mexico Bankers Association? Where are they on this piece of legislation? Madam Chair and Representative, I don't know. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next, we go to Representative Brown. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, um, Representative, I have a few questions just so I can have some clarity on this bill. Mm -hmm. So, it says in the bill that the new National Infrastructure Bank would perform as a traditional commercial bank. Um, and uh, that is in the sense, at least, of financing um, the, uh, for long-term loans. Madam Chair and Representative, I see from the analysis that, and maybe this is where I'm getting held up, that the bill treats the bank as a government corporation exempt from tax. So, Madam Chair and Representative, 
is that not a conflict to say it would be like a commercial bank that would be exempt from tax? Madam Chair, I'd like to have my expert witness answer that question. Thank you very much. Um, the you're correct. The bank is incorporated under the um, U.S. Government Corporations Act as a financial institution, just like the Export-Import Bank is. Uh, above and beyond that, and the fact that it gets a tax exemption because it's government-owned, it is responsible for its own internal operations to, to provide loans for infrastructure projects. And in doing so, uh, because it's a nonprofit, uh, government-owned, any monies that are left over after meeting other operational needs, then those monies, extra monies, would go into a trust fund that would be the same trust fund I mentioned earlier that uh, New Mexico could qualify to get grants rather than loans from the uh, from the um, from the National Infrastructure Bank. And one other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, the, the again the local jurisdictions would be in charge of what kind of loans they take on. And we will be keeping in mind doing economic development and building jobs in the state over time. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair Representative, I also see in our analysis that the bank would treat contributions to the bank as charitable contributions. Uh, Madam Chair Representative, could we have that explained, please? Uh, Madam Chair, again, I defer to my expert. Thank you very much. Uh, we uh, know that there are several that there are quite a number of um, philanthropic or organizations who might be interested in just making a donation to the National Infrastructure Bank to go into this trust fund uh, to provide grants rather than loans to low income communities. And that's the purpose for giving them a tax exemption for their contribution. Thank you. Um, and then um, another question, Madam Chair and Representative. So, um, there would be private investors in the bank. Uh, they would be not making charitable contributions, Madam Chair, but they would be, um, they'd be holders of preferred stock. Uh, and that would be because they would be giving up some of their pension savings in order to buy stock into the bank. Is that correct, Madam Chair, Representative? Uh, Madam Chair, that's what I understand, but Alpec, would you like to add anything to that? Great. So currently, the private sector, which composes uh, state and local governments, corporations, pension funds, are holding $26 trillion of our national debt. Uh, they keep it in savings accounts, essentially savings accounts. And what this would entail is them and they earn and they're earning interest on these treasuries from the federal government. Uh, what this would entail is that they would swap those treasuries, a small bit of them, uh, into the NIB to capitalize the bank, and then they'll get a little extra return. And so the bank would cover that extra return plus what the treasuries earn uh, as the base yield. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Representative. So um, I have not read the, um, the House Resolution 3339. I'm just looking at the bill that you brought to us today and looking at the analyses that we have. And I'm a little concerned that I don't see here um, the, I think, I don't think the word was eligibility, yeah, the, the, there are apparently criteria for preferences uh, in lending in, in this congressional bill, and I'm a little uncomfortable voting for it not knowing what those are. So that, that is a concern. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anybody else? Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion. A motion to the table. Okay. Second. Motion to the table. Take the roll. Representative Brown? Yes, to table. Representative Lara Cadena? No, to table. Representative De La Cruz? No. Representative Harper? Yes. Representative Jones? Yes. Representative Lundstrom? No. Representative Madrid? Representative Pettigrew? No. Uh, yes, to table. Yes. Representative Romero? No to table. Representative Garcia? No to table. Representative Hopkins, you hold? Uh, no to table. Motion to table fails, 406. We're back on the bill. I'll move it. Do you pass? Thank you. Second by Lana Padena. Let's call the roll again. Representative Brown? No. 
Representative Lara Cadena? Yes. Representative Dana Cruz? Yes. Representative Harper? No. Representative Jones? No. Representative Lundstrom? Yes. Representative Madrid? Representative Pettigrew? No. Representative Romero? Yes. Representative Garcia? Yes. Representative Hockman v. Hill? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 4. Thank you. I think um, I'll find out some good questions. Again, this is just to support the development. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative.